We will now analyze the six changes in state of matter that we need to know. All the red arrows mean that you need to provide energy, while the blue arrows mean that the energy needs to be taken out from the substances for the change to take place. For example, for going from solid to liquid, we need to give energy to the solid to get into the liquid state, and from the liquid we need to give energy to pass to the gas state. Melting is the process by which a solid becomes a liquid. Solid particles absorb energy and they break the lattice bonds that hold them together in the solid. Liquid particles have enough energy to move around, but they do not have energy enough to escape the liquid, so they stay in the container. The temperature at which the solid substance changes into a liquid is called the melting point. The melting point can be used to identify a substance. For example, if the substance is a solid inside a freezer and melts at zero Celsius, transforming into a clear liquid at room temperature, and it doesn't smell, it may be water. Freezing, also called solidification, is a process in which a substance releases extra energy to become a solid. In the picture, you can see a person throwing uh, hot water into the air. The air is so cold that the water immediately freezes, forming a solid that we call snow. Freezing point is the temperature at which the substance changes from liquid to solid. In the case of the water, the freezing temperature is zero Celsius. Do you notice any relationship between the melting and freezing point? Well, yes both have the same value of temperature. This will become handy in a few minutes. Sometimes we smell candles in the supermarket before deciding which to buy. If we can smell a substance, it's because its gaseous particles with the smell contained in the candle wax are released into the air. Sublimation is the process in which a solid turns directly into a gas without passing by the liquid state. In the picture, you can see a dry ice. This is one of the most common examples for you. Dry ice is formed by carbon dioxide molecules, which is a gas at room temperature. In the factory, they compress the carbon dioxide hard enough to form a solid lattice. But as soon as we take out from the containers, we can see the white smoke-like substance. One important consideration is that gases cannot be seen unless they are colorful. The white smoke that we see in dry ice is actually composed by water molecules in the air that, when in contact with the dry ice, condense and form a cloud-like that we see. Deposition occurs when we absorb the energy of a gas and it converts into a solid without passing through the liquid state. The basic example is iodine. Let's watch the video together. Iodine is a gray solid. If we get those pellets and we put it in a beaker on a hot plate, we are going to notice immediately that the solid releases purple vapors. That is the sublimation of iodine from solid to gas. If we put a flask with ice, those vapors are going to get cold again and they will form a solid state of iodine again. That is the deposition and after a few minutes you're going to see the beautiful crystals of iodine forming at the bottom of the flask. Condensation is the change from a liquid to a gas. This process can be observed in cold cans during the summer that condenses the humidity in the air, or also the droplets of water that we can see on leaves before the sun heats them up. Condensation point, in the other hand, is the temperature at which a substance changes from gas to a solid. If we have a very hot water vapor and lower the temperature, it will change into a liquid at 100 Celsius. The change from a liquid to a gas is tricky 
It can be done in two different ways. Both of them are called vaporization, but depending on the conditions, we will use two different terms, evaporation or boiling. Evaporation occurs only on the liquid surface. If we leave an open container with water, we will see that after some time, the water disappears. This change occurs because the particles of the surface absorb the energy of the air above and use that energy to escape from the liquid. Evaporation occurs at any temperature, but the hotter the environment, the more evaporation will be produced. That's why liquids evaporate faster in the summer than in winter. Please be advised that evaporation occurs at any temperature. The most common name for a change between liquid to gas is boiling. If we heat a liquid enough, all its particles will reach the temperature where they have enough energy to become a gas, all at the same time. This is the boiling point or boiling temperature. Boiling occurs all around the liquid and that's why we see bubbles all over. Boiling point, in the other hand, is the temperature at which a substance changes from liquid to gas and it has the same value as the condensation point. Now you can better understand the graph from before, where all the changes in state of matter are shown. Name them and show which ones release energy or require external energy to take place. This is another way of showing the changes in state of matter, where the ones at the top have more internal energy than the ones at the bottom. I included plasma, although it's not necessary, and the names for the changes in each process. This graph is called heating curve of water and represents the temperature for the particles in each state. At the top, the representation of what you would observe when you actually do the experiment. So let's begin explaining what happens here. Let's say that I have ice in my freezer. Uh, the freezer are not negative 40 Celsius, but close enough. So we take the ice and we put it on a stove inside a pan and we begin heating it up. So the solid ice will absorb the energy and will use that energy to increase the temperature. At that moment, we are going to observe only ice, solid water or ice in the pan. When it reaches zero Celsius, the ice will begin melting, forming liquid water. In our pan, we will observe ice floating around the water. Until all the ice is melted, we are not going to have a change in temperature because all the heat that we use or we give to the substance, the substance is going to use it only to change state. After all the substance is molten, uh, we are going to have liquid water. So the liquid water has very low temperature or very low energy. So it needs the extra energy to pass to the gas state. That's why it's going to increase the temperature. When we heat it up, it's going to begin increasing the temperature until it reaches to 100 Celsius. In the case of water, 100 Celsius is the boiling point. That means that at that temperature, the water will begin changing state from liquid to gas. In that case, we are going to have both substances present, the gas particles and the liquid particles. Until all the liquid particles change into the gas state, the temperature again will remain constant because the heat that we are adding is going to be used only to change state for those particles that didn't first. After all the particles have changed into the gas, the gas is going to begin increasing the temperature again. So we have changes in temperature in any temperature that is not the um, boiling point or the melting point of the substance. Every single substance that we can observe is going to have the same shape of the curve. The only thing that is going to differ is the values of the melting and boiling point. The heating curve for any other pure substance will look very similar as the one that we did for water. The only difference is that we will have different values in the flat zones for the melting point and the boiling point. If the substance is not pure, 
the melting and boiling point will not form a flat surface, but you don't know to need that for our level. The cooling curve will be like a mirror image of the heating curve, where the freezing point will be in the place that the melting point used to be, and the condensation point will replace the boiling point since they are opposite changes. Here you have a heating curve and a cooling curve back to back. You're going to see that the melting point is at the same level of the freezing point because they have the same value. And the boiling point and the condensing point also have the same value. Also, you can see that here the heat is added. That means that we are heating the substance, while in this one the heat is absorbed. So we begin with a gas and we are going to get all the way to a solid. Sometimes in your exams, you need to label these changes with the names or with the values of the melting and boiling point.